Hello, hello. Welcome to the Healthy Relationship Sisterhood. I'm Robin Smith, your founder, your hostess, and so happy to have you here. We are talking about communication pitfalls tonight. I'm getting a message that's right in my way. I'm going to say thank you to that. Okay. <laughs> um, communication pitfalls. I Communication is on my mind right now because I'm gearing up to offer a free communication training for you right here in this group. And I'm going to be telling you about that soon. But first, let's look at the pitfalls of communication that many of us fall into and some simple solutions for how to uh, resolve them. So uh, these are in no particular order, but they were top of mind for me when I thought about it. And they are common. So what I'd like to set the tone with for you is take it in and know that all of us do these things, or most of us do all of these things, and or most of us do most of these things, and so not to give yourself a real hard time or any kind of hard time if you are identifying with these patterns, but simply let yourself learn, let yourself get curious, and you know maybe you'll make a new commitment to learn how to undo the habit or pattern that you find yourself in maybe all too often. So listen, learn, contribute. I'd love to hear from you. I love it when you comment and when we can interact. I'm happy when you answer questions. I love to, uh, to when you ask questions, I'm happy to answer them. So just bringing stuff forward so I can see what's happening here. Okay, so let's go through a short list and and I'm guessing you might have other, um, other suggestions that you'd like to add, so I'd love to hear that too. So one, blame, right? Blaming is popular. It's so easy to look outside and see what other people are doing wrong and to point the finger and point it out to them. And then you are the blamer. And blamers get a, sometimes a positive feeling for a moment of being right or, or being the one who's not, um, you know, who's not wrong and pointing out how somebody else is. Maybe you get a hit of adrenaline and you feel good about yourself, but it doesn't last. So that's the problem. So blaming, you know, is a little toxic to relationships because nobody likes to be blamed. So it's best not to blame. And, and I'm just going to go through the list here, but raise a hand if you know that you tend to blame. Hey, Jennifer. Being right, exactly, and I'm going to talk about that soon in a moment as well. Um, so when you when you show up, I love hearing from you, and I love to know where you're from. It's fun to see where everybody's chiming in from. Sometimes we have people all over the map. So, so blame is one, criticism is another, and they're different, right? Blame seems to point out more like what you're doing, and then criticism is about who you are, like you're... Um, you're a bad person, you're mean, you're rude, whatever it might be. So when we're criticizing, we're, we're commenting on someone's character and putting them down. So, oh, you're in Encinitas. Cool. I went to school at UCSD. So welcome, Jennifer. Great to see you here. <clears throat> yeah, so criticism, you can raise a hand if you tend to criticize or if you were criticized a lot. And what you'll notice as we go through some of these patterns is that it's so common that if it, if it happened in your household of origin where you grew up, then you're likely to repeat it just by osmosis. You know, we, we're like sponges when we're little. And so we just, you know, spin back out what we, what we were given unconsciously. And so as we grow older and we see that that's not working very well anymore, we make an effort to make a change. But, um, but you know, it's, it's humbling, right? It's humbling to realize that we're doing things that we're not very proud of sometimes. And then we can learn how to make a shift. And um, if you saw the video, I, I, the teaching I gave here last week is was all about how to make a simple shift in the moment. So definitely check that one out. So another one, as Jennifer was pointing out, was being right, was believing that you're right. 
And who likes to be right? Raise a hand. <laughs> give me a give me a yes in the comments if you love to be right and don't like to be wrong, because you're not alone. And um, you know that's our ego talking, and the ego likes to um, likes to be right and have the answers and look good and look smart and 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 know what's happening. So that's that's just normal. Um, but when you're committed to being right and and then not. Uh, blaming would be the other side of that would be showing how others how they're wrong but when you're committed to being right it's also like you're being fixed and we're going to talk about that as another one like um, when you're fixed in a position of this is how it is and it's not any other way right we're kind of um, narrow-minded and tunnel vision and we're not open to possibility so it's pretty hard to have a connection with someone who's not open, who's very, you know, narrow-minded or fixed in their way of seeing things. And a great example of that is my way or the highway, right? If you're not in line with me, how and how this has to be, then you're out. And so it's not very uh, welcoming <laughs> to have that perspective. So that's another pitfall. So we had blame and criticism and thinking you're right, and then also being fixed in a position. And if you have other ideas you want to contribute about what that looks like when you're fixed in a position, or maybe when your partner is, go ahead and put that in the comments. Okay, so let's continue then with sometimes what we do is we're very indirect in our communication. So we're talking about the pitfalls of communication, right? So how are we sometimes indirect you know that kind of beating around the bushes thing like not really wanting to say what's going on for you i was talking about that with someone earlier today like hoping they bring it up or hoping it just gets itself worked out without having to say anything but meanwhile if you're not bringing up what's important to you then you're the one suffering because you kind of keep going over it you churn about it you maybe you lose sleep about it you obsess about it and it's kind of your own block, you know, to having a flow with that person. So they might not have an issue with it, but if you do, then that's on you to say something. And the more clear and direct you can be, you know, the more you'll be heard and understood, which I'm pretty sure most people want. It's pretty much the most common thing I hear from my clients is I want to be heard and understood. And that's really normal that we all want that we deserve that and we long to be seen and if you're not making yourself known by being indirect and unclear it's kind of hard to be seen and understood so this is another pitfall and we do that for a reason we're scared of being rejected we're scared of hurting someone's feelings and as i was telling someone today you know obviously we want to be as kind and compassionate as we can given the situation and then we just have no control about how over how someone responds so we might do it just perfectly and they still get upset or mad or sad or disappointed and and but if we don't say anything then then we're still in that block right we're still not making any connection or we end up pulling away because we're feeling that when we could have cleared it so that's just one example of like not being direct and clear. <clears throat> and if you have any others to add, I'd love to know. I didn't put the word out today um, until half hour ago, so I'm I'm not surprised we have a small group tonight and I'm hoping many of you I know are gonna watch the replay. And so when you're watching the replay, please leave a comment and share and share your perspective because everybody learns from each other. That's what I love about doing group programs and having this group is, we have the group think and we we respond and grow from each other's wisdom so thanks for contributing so let's keep going down the list here when um, we get into pitfalls what that might look like so here's a big one not taking responsibility for your part right and so examples of how you might do that of how you might not be taking responsibility is explaining your way out of it well this because this happened blah 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 and you try to give like a long explanation or you make excuses well I couldn't because I had to da 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 
And then um, another one is defending yourself. Well, that's not true. And, you know, just kind of getting puffy and trying to push back. Um, and so those are ways that we don't fully take responsibility. Say if somebody is giving us some feedback, like you're late and, and the truth is you are late. <laughs> and instead of saying, you're right, I'm late, you know, I meant to get here earlier and I could have done X, Y, Z in order to do that, but I didn't, you know, you might give a whole host of explanations or excuses or defend yourself. And so when we're in defensiveness, we're not making a connection. In fact, we're creating more distance in connection. So connection is one of the, you know, top of mind things that I hear from my clients also. And I know it's so important to me and I'm guessing it's important to you too, that we all want a real connection, a satisfying connection, an intimate connection with people that, you know, that we want to be close to. And so when we're not taking responsibility, that's a way that we're creating actually the opposite. We're creating more distance. So part of responsibility is owning your part, is telling the truth about your part of the dynamic instead of trying to put it off on somebody else or kind of get your way out of it. So here's another one, staying on the surface. I made a post about this on Instagram today. So if you're following me on Instagram, um, you'll see it there or you will, or you can go follow me and it's robin.smith.relationshipcoach. I'm pretty active over there and I have pretty juicy um, posts. So, um, but here's what I was saying. Staying on the surface is sort of like, um, when we, when we just don't go a layer deeper. So our communication might be just how we learn to communicate. Like, oh, that's nice. When someone's telling you their story or what happened, you might say things like, oh, how cool or awesome, or you're amazing. And what's up and how's it going? And so those types of interactions are, you know, they, they kind of don't, they don't invite depth they invite kind of superficial interaction. They keep things more on the surface with the details of, of life. But if you want depth, which I think many of you do, that's why you're here, that you need to, or part of how you do that, there's two ways, is that you share more deeply, and we'll talk about that more in a moment, but you also ask questions that invite depth. So you might ask, someone about how do you feel about that or what are you really wanting and so you're inquiring more into their felt experience of the situation instead of just the kind of surface level of what was here what was there and timing and and placement and things like that hopefully that makes sense and if it doesn't leave me a comment in the um, under the video and i'd be happy to share more so that was staying on the surface is another pitfall. It can be a pitfall in communication, if uh, especially if you want your communication to bring you more connection. Attacking the messenger. So this is like high level defensiveness here. When you're attacking the person verbally, of course, physically would be too, but uh, verbally for now, if you're attacking back and attacking back might look like, well, that's not fair. Well, you said this and well, because of you, blah, blah, blah. And so it's like a blame, but you're also, you know, it's a little more harsh. Um, you're showing them all their faults or you're making them the source of the problem. Um, so that again can be a pitfall because you can't have a peaceful connecting type of conversation when you're feeling attacked right? <laughs> Nobody likes to feel attacked. And I know it's not a true feeling when I say feel attacked, but you, when you perceive that you're being attacked, you're going to freeze, you're going to tense up, right? You might leave because it doesn't feel safe or, and it may not feel fair, right? So any of that is going to, um, again, create some distance. Continuing on, um, not being open to feedback. This was huge when I learned about this. So it's the opposite of defending and explaining and giving excuses is being open to feedback. 
being open to learning from the situation. So if someone's communicating something to you and you've got the walls up, that's not right, that's not fair, that's not what I said, that's not what I did, well, it's your fault, blah, 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 then that's all being closed, right? Being closed to connection. So being open to the feedback might look like, hmm, thanks for sharing that, or wow, I hadn't thought of it that way, or huh, that's interesting. Let me think about that. So it's it's taking it in, right? It's receiving information instead of pushing it back. Let's move on to not sharing intimately. So I mentioned that one earlier. That's a communication pitfall, right? Because again, it's like being more on the surface, which has its value and its place. But when we want connection, we want to not only invite others to share intimately, but we want to do that too. So it's even. So we're letting others know us more, right? Because that, that is what we want. We want to be known, like I was saying, we want to be seen and understood. And we can't be if we're just, you know, talking about the, the surface level of life. So sharing more intimately includes sharing about your true feelings your, you know, more um, scary thoughts, your desires. That's a next level of sharing. And even stuff you might be afraid of sharing, you might be afraid of getting judged. But when you do, you are opening yourself to more depth and more connection. So I'm not saying you should do that with everybody. I'm saying choose who you want to do that with. Choose those people you feel safe with to do that and people who you want more depth and connection with. Continuing on, I've got two more for you. Being highly reactive and not present. A big pitfall. And that is one of the main complaints that people tell me about is, you know, either they're highly reactive in, in you know, they get triggered easily or their partner does or they're parent or their kid or whoever and um, and then it's really difficult to communicate plain and simple right if someone's really triggered reactive reacting they're whatever however they are right they're raising their voice or they're shaking or they're sweating or they're throwing things or they're accusing and blaming and some of the stuff we've already talked about <clears throat> it's pretty hard to stay calm and peaceful and it's pretty hard to connect to that because it's scary and that would be normal if you were scared of that in somebody else, somebody else being reactive with you. So when we're scared, we, we tense up internally, we get into the sympathetic uh, mode of the nervous system, the fight flight, and then we're literally physically not able to be totally present. And you can't be connected if you're not present, right? If you're thinking about staying safe. Like, how am I going to get out of here? How am I going to defend myself? Are they going to hurt me? You know, all that's, it's keeping you on guard. Um, <clears throat> so we can only do that when we feel safe. Um, so I, I've shared some stuff here in this group in the past about some ways to do that, how to, how to shift from reactivity to getting more present. Um, and some of the stuff I actually shared last week about getting unstuck, I highly recommend you check that out because those are tools that are going to help you get more present with yourself and help you manage the reactivity that's occurring in you. And, uh, and I'm not suggesting that you stay in a situation that's not safe. So if you, if you honestly feel like you're in danger, then of course you should get out. Um, but we're talking about when someone's just being like irrational or, you know, harsh or mean or whatever, overly um, excited and, and you don't feel safe or, um, or you just feel scared. And it may not be reasonable that you do, but you can't help it, right? Because your nervous system has a response to that. We all do. <clears throat> so there's ways that you can take care of yourself in the moment to help your own nervous system calm down so you can be more present or at least think about get your brain back online and think about how do I want to handle this in a you know conscious way. <clears throat> Let me know if that's making sense or if you're having any questions pop up for you. <clears throat> 
and we're moving along here. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little froggy in there. <clears throat> so the last one I have on my list, and again, if you're, I know some of you are coming and going, and um, if you have anything to add, I'd love to hear from you. So the last one I'm having here is lacking empathy and or compassion. They're different. I'm not going to go into the subtleties of that, but basically that ability to um, to feel for someone's suffering, right? To to want them to not suffer. That's compassion. <clears throat> and so if you're lacking that, if you can't have a sense of, of concern for someone's suffering, which some people have. Hi, Yvette. <clears throat> <clears throat> awesome, great to see you. <clears throat> Boy, <clears throat> not sure. There we go. If you're not able to have compassion, then um, you know it's harder to connect again. So that's a, I see it. It's a, it's like more than communication. That's just a pitfall in connection in general. But it can show up in your communication, right? If you're like, well, that's your problem, you know, sorry for you, or sucks to be you, right? <laughs> that's not compassionate. It's it's a little just off-putting, or it's almost like pushing someone away. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's try some water. Feels like it's a little deeper, but <clears throat> so. I've gone through, I, I mentioned 12 ways that you might get into communication challenges. I'll go through them again briefly if you got here later. And of course, this video will stay up for a while so you can um, listen to listen back. And um, if you are watching the replay, of course, you've probably watched from the beginning, so that's great. Blame, criticism, thinking you're right, being unclear or indirect. Being fixed in your position, this is how it is, and not seeing any other possibilities. Not taking any responsibility for your part. Explaining, giving excuses, defending. Staying on the surface level instead of going deeper. Attacking the messenger. Not being open to feedback. Again, more like being defended. Not sharing yourself intimately. Being highly reactive and therefore not present. And lastly, not accessing compassion when you're connecting. So that's a sampling. Oh, there's another one. Ah, the key reactivity. Yes, to presence. Thank you. Um, that's a sampling. There's more. And like I said, when I started, and you may have missed that, I'm getting ready for a seven day free training right here in this group called Get Heard. And it's a, it's a training all about healthy communication skills. And so in that training, we're gonna take what I've shared here, not all of it, but a lot of it's in that training. We're gonna take it a lot deeper than I just did tonight. So we're gonna look at the pitfall and then give you some solutions that you can apply right away. And the training, I'm gonna put a link here in the comment for you um, it's actually, I've never done a seven days worth. I've done five days and every time I've done it, I've added more. So if you've done it before, definitely come back because there's going to be way more um, information and practices and you know techniques that you can learn and implement right away. <clears throat> and not only that, but I love to give prizes because it's so fun and it helps, you know, give you incentive to show up and keep learning. So there are prizes and I'm giving away more prizes than I ever have before as well. So that's going to be super fun. We're starting March 15th and I'm going to right now get that link for you, which I did not get ready, but it's very handy. Luckily, here it is. Get heard. Okay. So it's simple. When you register, you're going to get a really cool workbook to help your learning process. And so here comes that for you now in the comments. Yvette, what a gift. I'd love to participate. Great, Yvette. I would love to have you here. So um, it's a really, it's really fun to learn together, right? And to grow and evolve together, right? Because it can be, you know, a little hard to face sometimes. Oh, I'm doing that. Oh, I shouldn't do that. You know, and how do I do it? But we're going to get opportunities to practice learning together live, not only in the comment section, but in Zoom classes. So 
So definitely sign up and look for the emails with the information. Um, and if you don't see them, they may be in your spam or promotions folder. So make sure to find those and drag them over into your primary inbox so you will receive any notices. There could be changes. So um, please stay tuned for that. And I'm so looking forward to sharing it with you. Thanks for coming, everybody. If you have any more comments or questions after I end the video, feel free to leave those in the, in the comment section, and I will be sure to look for those and, and get back and, and respond. All right. Much love. Mwah. Have a beautiful evening or morning or whenever you're watching, and I'll see you next week. Same time, 6 p.m. here in this group, Pacific, which is 9 p.m. Eastern time. Every Thursday is when I'm here. Okay. Adios.